Greetings and welcome to a new video about BGT current source design. This is our example 8 where we discuss the cascode configuration of this BGT current sources. We will see that step by step in our calculation and also verify this in SPICE simulations. So our circuit is given here. You see the simple current mirror configuration using the BGTs Q1 and Q2. And on top of that, you see the Q3 and Q4, exact same configuration. And on top of that, that creates this cascode. You can, of course, create more uh, stages in this format and you make this more uh, of cascode configuration. What we'd like to know is the result for the resistor in order to have a design for a load current of IC4, which is here 4 milliamps. Well, what is given? Uh, we know that the Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4, so all these BGTs, NPN, are matched. They have the early voltage of infinite, so we don't have to worry about, uh, worry about that. The beta is 100 and VC and VE is given, also the VBE for each of them are assumed to be 0 0.7. Okay, let's look at our solutions. The first step, calculation, we designate here the node X first. And there's also a node Y here. And let's then set up the Kirchhoff voltage uh, current law KCL at node X. That means IC, IRF will be then IC3 plus this current, which is then again IB3 plus IB4. That's shown here. Now we can also write that down as because the IC3 and IB3 will be together the IE3, which is the emitter current of Q3, which is then shown here. Now let's designate as equation number one. We will come back to that shortly. The Kirchhoff's current law KCL at node Y is given by IE3 is equal to IC1 plus this current in this branch, which is IB1 and plus IB2. That's shown here. And again, taking this together, IC1 and IB1, will create IE1 because emitter current is a summation of the collector current and the base current. That's always the case. We have this expression. Now let's call this now equation number two. Now, since VBE1 and VBE2 are equal to each other, that is actually this voltage, we can say that the IC1 and IC2 are equal to each other. That is the consequence of this base to emitter voltage and base to emitter voltage for the transistors. That is also that the base currents are equal to each other, so IB1 is equal to IB2. And that will then result that the emitter currents are all equal to each other, so IE1 is equal to IE2. Okay. Now then we can write uh, equation number two. So then equ equation number two can be written as the following. So we can say IE3 will be IE2 because IE1 is also IE2 plus this IB2 here. And then this can be then further simplified by writing down this emitter current by B at the plus one times the base current or beta plus 2 in the parentheses times the base current for Q2. Now, since the base current is also given by the collector current over beta, which is valid for all the transistors, but in this case specifically for Q2, we have that this expression is also given, so we can take this here and then substitute in this, this equa uh, expression IC2 over beta in here. We have this expression for emitter current of Q3 is equal to beta plus 2 over beta times IC2. Now, since IC2 is equal to IE4, that is here because IC2 is this one, and that is the collector current of Q2, and the emitter current of Q4, which is flowing here, which is of course the same branch, so they must be exact same. We can say that, and let's designate this equation number 3, we have then IE3 is then equal to beta plus 2 over beta, and this is then the emitter current of Q4. So I bring this beta here underneath and then replaces IC2 by IE4. Which is also, since IE4 is given as the beta plus 1 times the IB4 by this expression. Now let's designate this equation number 4. Now, when we now substitute equation number four in equation number one here, we get the following. IRF is equal to 
Now IE3, which is then given by this expression. Now you bring this beta plus one in the numerator and then beta plus two times beta plus one, you get this over beta. And this IB4, but there's also another IB4 there. So we get now this expression completely. So take out IB4 and you have this. You can further simplify this or take it in one fraction. Then you get this expression. Okay. So this is the outer IREF expression in terms of betas and also the IB4. Now we are really close because we would like to have a relationship between the reference current and the load current IC4. Now we know that then the we can also rewrite this by the way by take by working out the parentheses of beta times beta, beta times one, two times beta, and then two times one, and then of course again plus beta, then you get this complete thing, and then further uh, uh, simplification or calculation is then beta squared plus four beta plus two over beta times IB4. Now we know that IB4 is equal to IC4 over beta. That is again, this collector current is beta times larger than the base current here. Then we can substitute this expression in this IREF and you get now this. Now taking this beta here in the denominator, then you get beta squared and then you have an IC4. So you see now the relationship between the reference current and the load current. Now we can simp further simplify that by dividing out each term here by beta squared. So you get one because of this beta squared over beta squared and then four beta plus two over beta squared. Okay. Now let's now substitute the values we have because we have a beta of 100 and the rest are just uh, some values, so some, some numbers. So, and then 0.004 because we want four milliamps. So what we actually want to calculate is how much reference current we need. So this is a little bit larger, so you see it's 4.1608 milliamps. So we need to go a little bit larger. Why? Because on the way to the ref, uh, the load current, we lose something because of this base currents. So Kirchhoff's Walter's law will then give you the following. So we can say VCC all the way to the final point here, from top to bottom. You see VCC is equal to resistor voltage, which is I ref times R plus the voltage across the, this junction, base to emitter, and then plus this junction, base to emitter for the Q1, and then the voltage at VCC node, VE node, I mean. But we need an expression for R, because that's the resistor we need to calculate in order to have this reference current. So we just rewrite this. So you bring actually everything to the left side and divide by I ref, that's what, that's what you have. And we now have the 15 minus minus 15 minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7, but you assume the base emitter junction was 0 0.7. Divided by the reference current we just determined, that will give you 6,874 ohms. Okay, let's then bring this here all together. And now look at the simulation result. This is the DC analysis in the simulator. Now what you see is, let's let me get back first. What you see is actually at the Load current is very close to 4 milliamp, still slightly larger. And also this is 4.167 milliamps, which is also slightly larger. So that means actually the following. So we have calculated our resistor, but probably that is not uh, large enough in order to make this current equal to that one. So in, if you make this a little bit larger, not too much large, but some maybe 5 or 10 ohms up, this will be it will go down and it will also replicate there and will also go down. So that is the tuning step we will now make. So we don't change it uh, a lot, slightly. So after some trial and error, I changed this R from 6,874 to 6,883. So a slightly increase here. And then this will result. We get now exactly 4 milliamp. We get here 4.161 milliamp, just, just the rounding off by the simulators. You see that actually they are exactly the same. Only the resistor must be adjusted to this new value of 6883. And then the design is complete, so we can check this as shown. All right, this is our example considering the cast code configuration using BGDs. And we have designed for a specific load current, determined first the uh, uh, required formula which relates this IRF to the load current and also determined from there the resistor here to create this current. 
and after that we also tuned the resistor to get the exact 4 milliamp we wanted for our load current. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.